What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode we are going to be going over tracing or performance profiling. And so this is going to be a method of determining how well your game is running, what's taking up the most of your CPU, your GPU, memory, all that stuff. So we're going to be able to see if there are things we should tone down to make the game perform better, or if there are things that we have more leniency with so we can increase what we do with our budget there. So if we want to add more visual effects, we want to add more states to our AI behavior, we may be able to do that. Now this is my fighting game. So I'm using this as the example, but this will work with any Unreal project. And it also works in Unreal Engine 4 as well. But the method is a little bit different because in Unreal Engine 4, it was the session front end, and then eventually it became Unreal Insights. We're going to be covering Unreal Insights today, specifically in UE5. If there is interest in the session front end in UE4, I will gladly put out content on that. But this will work with any Unreal project. So before we do that, if you want to check out how we did the fighting game, what you were just seeing on the screen there, following along with that series, I'll link you to the playlist right here in the top right corner, just so you can get caught up. Again, it's not relevant for today's episode, but if you're interested, then feel free to check that out. I believe there are 250 episodes to date. Alternatively, if you're not interested in that, I do recommend you watch these episodes as well. These episodes are my debugging episodes. They are also generic episodes that show you how to debug any Unreal Engine project. Debugging is one of your best tools as a programmer, and I recommend you learn it if you're not comfortable or familiar with it in Unreal Engine. But with those things aside, we can go ahead and get started. So I'm in Unreal Engine, and this specifically is 5.3.2. Any version of Unreal Engine 5 is going to be pretty similar to this. So down toward the bottom of your window here, you have this button with a little drop down arrow that says trace. You can select that and open up this little pop up here. A lot of this is preferences and settings for your traces as well as where to store them. And then you can also start a trace from here. I keep everything default for today's episode, but just be aware that you have these options available to you. We will go into some of them in more depth, but the one we actually care about for right now is this Unreal Insights button, the session browser. If we click that button, it opens up this window. This is the Unreal Insight Session Browser. I don't have any traces in here, but as you do performance analysis, you will get some in this section. So the first thing we wanna do at this point is actually trace something. You can either do it through the menu I was showing you earlier with all the other settings, or you can just press this button right here, which is Start Tracing. So if you press that button, you'll get a little notification that the trace is started, and it does start right here while you're in the editor. To actually perform performance analysis and profiling on our game, we want to load up the game and let's say load into a level. So we'll load two characters, we'll load the default level. I'll let the intros play, that way we can analyze that as well. We are now in our game and it is being traced at the current moment. So now we can come over here and do something. Let's go ahead and spawn a hitbox, jump in the air, crouch down, all basic stuff. Let's get into some collision stuff, visual effects, sound effects. We could do pushing of the opponent, throws. We can use cheat codes, give everybody super. And then we can use a super move. X move, there we go. We got materials changing, the timer counting down. And let's see if we can do a super move. I believe it is the X button. There we go. So we have all those things going on. So now we can go ahead and close our game and stop tracing. You can just press this button again or go to your menu and click stop trace. Now at this point, we want to go to the menu I was showing you earlier, which is Unreal Insights. So if we click that button, we'll get that same pop-up we did before, and this time we should have a file there. You can see it loaded up, and we do. We have all the information that we could want about this file. So let me make it the proper size for this window. 
You can't see it because it's off of my screen capture here, but there's a little icon with Unreal Engine and a magnifying glass that is Unreal Insights. It's this icon right here. It will show up in your toolbar at the bottom if you're on Windows. And then you can look at the name of the file. Now the name by default goes to the date and time. You have your platform, which is Windows 64. The app name is just Unreal Editor. You can do traces on other things like packaged games, but this is coming from the editor. The build config is debug game, which is the default when you're playing in the editor. Again, if you're doing a packaged game or a standalone game, you could change that. Build target is the editor. Here's the file size. Now these file sizes do get big pretty quickly. So you may wanna clean these up if you don't have a lot of space or save them out to a special location. But when you're ready, you can go ahead and double click this or click open trace at the bottom to open up the actual trace. And you can see that we have our GPU, our game thread, and a bunch of other things in here. And so if you look up at the top here, you can see how your game was running at every single frame. And you can zoom in to really see every single frame if you want. So you can see your times here and that timestamp that you see at the start, like it says 28 minutes, 40 seconds, that's actually how long the editor has been open in this case or how long the project has been open. It's not your in-game time. Like I didn't have the game open for 28 minutes. I had the editor open before I started recording this. And so it's tracing that. If you go to the start, you see I started at 27 minutes and 1.96 seconds. So this shows you your FPS at every given frame as well as how long each frame took which is super useful because then you can look at spikes like this. When you want to figure out the reason for your spike, you can go down here to this section. So below the graph you have here, you go to this area. When you click on a frame, it changes everything down here because it's going to show you everything that was happening during that frame. And you can see it's very precise. Like I can scroll in and I can see microseconds, even down to some nanoseconds. You can use your scroll wheel to scroll in and out here for Unreal Insights. Now the main objective you wanna to reach to run your game at 60 FPS is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. See in the little pop-up window where it says game frame 6862 above my cursor, and then in parentheses it has 55.5 FPS. It's saying at 18 milliseconds per frame, you're running at 55.5 FPS. So click on any frame you want to go to and investigate. Let's pick this rendering frame 11,545. Let's click it. It took 19.92 milliseconds on this frame. So we were getting about 50.2 frames per second at this point. So you can see we're a little bit under where we want to be and we may want to investigate why that is. Once you click on that frame, it will highlight the section of what occurred in the time period of the frame we clicked on. Remember, it was 19.9 milliseconds for that entire frame. This is a 19.9 millisecond window that we have here, this blue section that we have that my mouse is going between. At this point, you can scroll up and down through this list to see what was taking up the most. The game thread does have the F engine loop tick going the whole time. F engine loop tick was running here, and we can click on that. When we click on that, we'll see a section that says callees down here. If we resize our windows a little bit, we can get more space here. So F engine loop tick was taking up that entire 19.9 millisecond spot. In fact, it took longer than that, but for this frame, it was filling that entire time slot. Now you have the hierarchy here, so we can see we go from tick to frame to slate tick, which is what draws to the screen. Then we had draw windows, then we had prepass. Get text value is something we can make sense of. It's actually retrieving a text value from some blueprint or widget. Since it's in Slate, we can assume it's a widget. If we go down one more, we have Get P1 Combo Rating Text. So Get P1 Combo Rating Text is something that we have in our base character HUD to actually determine what our combo rating was for player one. So if they've hit the opponent three, four times, we have to figure out what the rating was. If it was good, great, excellent, combo king, or one of our other values that we have in our game for that. It's taking up 34.6 microseconds. And of that operation, we have get enumerator user friendly name. So this is returning the enum value from the result that we pass into it, and then converting from string to text, which is when we display it to the screen. That's taking up 3.1 microseconds. That's just one component here. We have get damage text, get stun frames text, get startup frames text, get press any input text text, get active frames text, get recovery frames text, P2 combo rating, round timer, P1 name, P2 name, combo counter. 
All of these things are functions that we have on our base character HUD that have to be rendered by Slate, and the engine is ticking and updating that every single frame, and it's taking up some time. Now, it's normal. These things are going to take time. This is why performance can be really important, because all these little things add up, and they don't seem like they make a big difference, but they can. But understanding where they come from, and each part that is being checked in here, is really useful to learning what affects your performance and what doesn't. You can see I've opened up a lot of these other ones, and even is valid checks are showing in here. When we have to check to see if something is valid, it takes time. It's only 1.7 microseconds. It's small, but it does take time. So all the values you see in all these dropdowns adds up to this get text value. After get text value, though, we have get value. And if you open up get value, it is your images. So we have combo counter visibilities. We have our image device brush. We have our P1 character image, as well as our function calls and checks in here. So all that adds up to our frame time as well. Then we have the widget invalidating itself, so that it has to redraw every time. And there's so much in here that you can view and look at. And this is just for the game thread. You can look at GPU and stuff as well. However, you'll notice there's not much on my side for GPU. I'm what you call it CPU bound. The GPU is waiting on the CPU. If we go back to this one here, like I was saying, the get P1 combo rating text is taking up the most microseconds of the text values. If we go back into the editor, I can show you exactly where that's at. It's in our base game mode HUD. And I can go into my graph and you'll see I have a function get P1 combo rating text. So this function is taking the most time out of all the text values. You can see here's the enum to string that it was mentioning earlier. If we go back to Unreal Insights, enumerator user friendly name. That is getting the enum to string node here, and then we're converting it to text. That is the next section here, convert string to text. So you can quite literally come into some logic that you had that you just checked out in Unreal Insights. And adjust this, say maybe I don't need to convert this to a string first. Maybe I want to access a data table instead of converting the string. Little things like this can make the difference in the long run depending on what you need in your game, how many things you have active, and how optimized you are. So we want to fix this. Now I'm going to have an entire episode dedicated to cleaning up each of our tutorials as we get into that. So expect a fighting game one very soon because I'm doing that as I'm going into the AI stuff. This is actually an older build that I have because I've already done some of this cleanup using this exact method. But for now, I just want to show you how to get in here, click on things, understand a little bit of what they mean. I have one other Unreal Insights episode planned where we can go over Unreal Insights for packaged projects as well. Packaged projects should run faster than in editor projects, so if you're not reaching the speed that you want, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Your package project should be significantly faster. You still want the editor to run very fast, but there's always that as an option too. You should check that out and see what speeds you get. So we have a lot more we're going to do with Unreal Insights, but I wanted to get you familiar with it. Just how to trace, how to do a quick investigation on what's slowing things down. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode on using Unreal Insights, and I hope you can use it and find it helpful. If you do and can, then please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out more than anything else you can do. But I do have a paid option. If you want to support me, you can support me on Patreon, YouTube memberships, or Discord subscriptions. You'll get extra benefits for doing that too. If you need any assistance using Unreal Insights or want more depth than what I gave you here, then feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description. I would be happy to help you out. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean LeBro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.